Welcome to chapter 3 of the book of Ruth. Last chapter, we see where Boaz took Ruth under his arm, so to speak, as far as giving her some leeway as far as what she could do with uh, the gathering, the gleaning of the uh, fields that he owned. And then when she went back and told Naomi, her mother-in-law, how well he treated her, then this continues and it says, uh, and she stayed with her mother-in-law. So she went back there. And her mother-in-law, Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, uh, O daughter, and the Thigatir, we have a transliteration there, the spelling, in no way shall I seek rest for you, that a good thing should happen to you. She's not going to stop until she finds something good for Ruth that uh, would make Ruth happy, satisfied. Um, I'm sure that Naomi loved her very much, and especially seeing that how Ruth stayed with her through thick and thin. Now, a mother-in-law, a mother, it's amazing how God has given uh, mothers a certain ability to look and find out what the children are doing. Uh, Amazing ways. My mother was had me when she was 44 years old. She was in her 90s. I lived and took care of her for a few years. And boy, I mean, she just knew everything I, I did. Uh, she, that's all she had to do was sit and figure out what I am all about, what I'm doing. Um, I had a dog, Arlo, same thing. Arlo would look at me and he would know uh, before I even hardly knew what to do. Uh, and he could react to it like I would have a toy, a pool toy that we would play with. And I would throw the pool toy in the middle of the room, and I'd be laying on the couch, and Arlo would be laying in another chair. And Arlo would look at me constantly, and I would try to act like I'm not going to jump and try to grab that pool toy off of the floor. And I would just turn my head away and like, you know, well, all of a sudden I'd jump. And wham, Arlo would grab that pool toy uh, before I would even get to it. So he had nothing better to do than to watch everything I did and knew everything. Now, the same thing with the mother is, is has, uh, I believe, the same ability and does that because it's just built in to her. And so she says, and now is not Boaz acquainted to us, she knew that he's a he's a relative of whom you were with his young uh, his young women. So it's a, uh, a question, but it's a rhetorical question. Uh, behold, he winnows at the threshing floor of the barley this night. Well, now how does she know what he's doing? I uh, doesn't say, but apparently she knew, and she's got a plan, and she gives it to Ruth, and you shall bathe and anoint, put on perfume, and make yourself look presentable. Put your clothes upon yourself, and ascend unto the threshing floor. Now, she wasn't part of that group, remember? She was a gleaner. She was allowed to go through and pick up what was left over uh, with his, uh, at his properties, but he was, she was not actually part of the group being paid. And then it says, you should not make yourself known to the man until he finishes eating and drinking, Boaz. So wait until afterwards. And it will be at his going to sleep that you shall perceive the place where he sleeps there. And you shall go in and uncover the things by his feet, and you shall go to sleep. And he shall report to you what you shall do. Well, okay, Ruth. All right, here's the, uh, here's the instructions. And there was a little bit more as it, we go down here in a few verses that she told her uh, uh, to mention to him that she was a relative, which then, Ruth, then Boaz knew what that meant. And Ruth said to her, All, as much as you should tell me, tell to me, I will do. And she, Ruth, went down 
unto the threshing floor, and did according to all as much as her mother-in-law gave charge to, to her. And Boaz ate and drank and did good to his heart. Now, I think that means he was drinking wine, felt good, and went to sleep in a portion of the pile. So they're probably drinking and having a good time and falls asleep uh, in the straw and then in the pile. That's what it probably was. And she, Ruth, came in Crefi, uh, a crypt, um, secret, came in secret and uncovered the things by his feet. She pulls up whatever he was covering with and climbed under and went to sleep. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was startled and disturbed. Uh, woke up, maybe had to go to the bathroom, who knows? What's going on down here? Ah, and behold, a woman slept at his feet. Pothon, uh, pod, tripod, three-feeted instrument. And he said, who are you? And she said, I'm Ruth, your bondwoman. And you shall put your garment border upon your bondwoman, for you are a relative. So now this is what Naomi told her to say. Didn't say that earlier, and this was what I was saying. So basically, Naomi knows the ins and outs of marriage and uh, setting up a marriage and so forth, that this is uh, a possible possibility of, uh, of a marriage between the two. And Boaz said, so he, Naomi said he'll know what to do. Boaz said, Evlogimani, Evlogi comes from that a blessing. You are by the Kyriotheo, Lord God, daughter, for you did good in your mercy at the last over the first, for you to not go after the young men, whether poor or whether rich. Well, the mercy was for him, that he was being blessed by this young woman who apparently wanted to be uh, attached to him. And he says, and now, O daughter, do not fear. Don't fear. Don't worry. That's going to be okay. The imperative. All whatever you should say, I will do for you. For all the all of my people of my tribe know that you are a woman of ability. And now, truly, I am a relative. But indeed, there is a relative in the land who is over me, closer, uh, a closer relative than he would be to her. Now, apparently they had these laws as far as the uh, marriage and uh, who was left over and who would marry who, and I don't know all the ins and outs of this thing, this, uh, of these ways that they had back in those days, but you can gather that this is what it was. This had to do with the relationships of, uh, in families. And he says, oh, you, you lodge the night, imperative, lodge here, stay here. And it will be in the morning that if he should act as next of kin for you, well, good, let him act as next of kin. But if he should not want to act of next of kin for you, I shall act of next of kin for you. So he will do what's necessary as the closest relative to take care of her. As the Lord lives, you go to sleep until morning. So just go to sleep and let it go. And she went to sleep at his feet until morning. And she rose up before a man could recognize his neighbor, early before the people were getting up and grogging and walking around, before anybody. And um, Boaz said, oh, don't let it, do not let it be known that a woman has come unto the threshing floor. So apparently this threshing floor was where the men slept. So uh, don't let anyone know. And he said to her, uh, bring the apron upon you and hold it. The apron out front. Hold, open it up. And she held it. And he measured six measures of barley, poured all this barley in it. So probably a lot. And placed uh, them upon her, unto her. And she entered uh, into the city. So they were out in the country there where they were doing that. So she goes back into Bethlehem. And Ruth entered to her mother-in-law. And she said, what is it, O daughter? 
And she, Ruth, reported to her all as much as the man did for her. And she said, These six measures of barley you gave to me, for he said to me, You should not enter empty to your mother in law. Well, it's going to be his mother in law. <laughs> so he's already knowing what to do. Take this to my future mother in law and uh, as a gift, and she will know that everything is fine that she has planned. And Naomi, she said, Sit down, O daughter, until you realize how of which the matter shall fall. And I changed that to which, uh, 5613. For not in any way should the man be still until whenever he should finish the matter today. And this is an important thing in his life, one of the, probably the most important thing in his life, marriage. I can't imagine anything else. Uh, maybe a m- mother would be the birth of a child. But now this man is apparently, he's not a young man, he's an older man. And he is looking forward to having a wife. And he's going to do what he needs to do. And uh, Naomi said, don't worry, he'll, he'll do what is necessary to do. Well, what do we find out? That what, How do we find out what he's going to do? Well, stay tuned for chapter 4, and you'll find out, and I will find out, and we'll go through it. Till then, God bless.